Okay, g'day fates, I'm back again. This time to talk about something a little bit different. I thought I'd talk about Trichobothria. Um, I posted something on Facebook a few days ago where I indicated what I thought was a Trichobothria on the Michelina Occatoria, um, and people showed a fair degree of interest in it. So I thought I'll now yeah, have a look at Trichobothria a little bit closer myself and um, do a little bit of a video about them. So first up, quick search in Google and looking at Wikipedia this is a, a very general overview and I'll, I'll read it and explain what it's saying. So Trichobothria, um, singular Trichobothrium, uh, elongate seti or hairs present in arachnids, various orders of insects and myriapods that function in the detection of airborne vibrations and currents. In 1883 Friedrich Dahl observed that they were detected by the sound waves from a violin and labelled them hearing hairs. So they're hairs, spiders have lots of hairs on them. Some of these hairs, um, as we'll find out, are going to be trichobothria. Uh, they detect airborne vibrations. We know that sound is the result of oscillation of air molecules um, producing high pressure points, low pressure points, so therefore trichobothria can detect sound as well as a current, also a flow of air. Now, unlike ordinary CT, which are tapered, now, now when we say ordinary, I mean if you look at a spider, you'll see that it's, you know, a lot of spiders are just covered in hair. Well, most, of those, most of those hairs are what it's sort of saying here is ordinary CT, they're tactile CT, um, and they're tapered. Trichobothria, in contrast to tactile CT, have the same thickness throughout their length. They fit into the bottom of a broad and deep cup to which connects a membrane with extreme flexibility which adds an extraordinary mobility to them. The least air vibration is able to get them moving and to excite the small group of sensory cells which ensures their innovation. Which just means that the hair sits in a, in a little cup attached to a membrane and actually forms into this membrane at the base and this membrane has very very little resistance to movement and what that means is that the trichobothria won't bend when there's an air current and it can be absolutely minimal the hair will deflect because there's very minimal very very minimal resistance to its movement so it doesn't bend this is in contrast to tactile CT which require a lot more force, a lot more force to move, and which do bend, so they don't break. Um, now, what I've been reading is pretty amazing. Um, research has shown that the minimal amount of energy to move one of these trichobothria can actually be measured uh, in fractions of the amount of energy found in a photon of light, which is really quite amazing. So what I wanted to do in this video was show show, seat, uh, show these trichobothria. Now this is Michelina occatoria, uh, the male red-headed mouse spider, which I made a couple of videos about, as I mentioned a few days ago. And this is leg number two. So that's the palp. This is leg one. And what I've got here is leg two. I've indicated the tarsus which is where the awns are found, or the, the tarsal claws, you can see them on there on the end, they're the tarsal claws. Uh, the tarsus, uh, metatarsus, and we've got the tibia. Now I've labelled these three segments because when I studied a specimen under the microscope I discovered that the trichobothria on the spider were only found on these three segments and from what I'm reading I think that seems to be fairly typical of spiders. I also did not find any on the patella, oh, sorry on the um, on the palp, this is the palp, I didn't find any. If you look at scorpions you will see that all of the trichobothria occur on the pedi palp, I don't think any well, certainly not any ordinary trichobothria occur on the legs of scorpions. So spiders seem to be the opposite, where the trichobothria are found on the legs and not found on the pedipals, at least in Michelina occatoria. 
So we see all these hairs and we think, well, which ones are Phrygobothria? There's so many of them and it's really quite difficult to pick out the Trichobothria in this situation. I can't easily see them, so well, how do you do it? I'll come to that in a minute because I've got a little video to show you how to detect them. This is the tarsus of Argatinus, which is a type of maturgid, a type of ground spider. And what this shows is an array of Trichobothria. So this is the distal end where the ungs are. And you've got one, two, three, four, five, six Trichobothria. And notice how they go from long at the distal end to short at the basal end of the segment. And what this does, this array of varying lengths, which as far as I've been reading only occurs in spiders, it increases the range of sensitivities that the spider can detect. And also it acts, acts apparently as a bandpass filter. So what it's doing is it's these hairs are, are really removing noise from the environment and only detecting the kinds of vibrations that the spider needs which are probably going to be prey related. If you look at the next segment, the metatarsis, you'll see the same thing. I haven't got the label, but there will be the same kind of an array where the longest ones are at the end and the shorter ones are at the, the basal end of the segment. So this, these arrays are important. They give the spider a lot more information. So trichobothria don't just work sort of as individual hairs. They work in these, in these fields. Now, let's have a look at video, if I can find it. This is taken through my microscope. When it comes up, I'll just pause it. Okay, I'll just turn the sound off and I can hear, it's driving me nuts. This is a tarsus. This is through my microscope. I've increased the contrast so that you can see it a little bit better. I've got it against a white background. Have a look. Here. Now this is what you see when I produce a slight current, I wave the card. You can have a little fan, you can just blow through your mouth if you wanted to, um, to get them to move. So they are so distinct, you can see them very, very clearly in this video. So they're flickering with the sound, with the, um, the current, in this case the air current coming in. Now what I do, when you look through the microscope, <clears throat> the depth of field is so narrow that you have, to, you have to focus in and out because something in the background or in the foreground, if it's, if it's outside of the point of focus, you may not see it. So you've got to be able to focus right the way from the back all the way to the front and look for Trichobothria, look for them moving. So you can see long one distally, and you've got another one, two, three, and there's a fourth one here. And the same thing, the same kind of thing, is that's the tarsus, the same kind of thing is repeated on the metatarsus. Now, I think there were four on the tarsus, and I'm not sure now for sure. I think there might have been three, only three on the uh, metatarsus and the tibia. I would need to look at my specimen again to be sure. This, the idea of this video is just to show you the moving and, and show you how you can actually determine which CT are in fact trichobothria. This next one shows you how difficult they are to see when they're not contrasted. So this is the dorsal surface of the tarsus and if you look carefully there they are, you can see them flickering backwards and forwards in response to the air currents which are flowing across this surface. And that's why it's important when you've got anything under the microscope to be able to move it around, turn it upside down, change the angle, which is a big benefit, of course, over photographs. And when it comes to species determination or looking at characters, nothing beats having the actual specimen because you can turn the specimen around and, and find things, discover things that you just simply won't see in a photograph. So if you want to know more about Trichobothria, 
discovered a great book. Um, on my Google searches by Friedrich Barth and also I read a number of his scientific publications. This guy is really really good when it comes to trichobothria and spider sense organs. Um, it goes through all of the different kinds of CT and um, things like slit sensilla which are another kind of um, mechanosensory organ on the spider. Very expensive book but you can read a fair bit of this book for free on Google which is really good that's what I did there's quite a bit of it there and as I say if you can get a hold of some of his papers this is this man here he's he's the man to read because he certainly knows what he's talking about and great diagrams great explanation so I hope you learned something about trichobothria and you know when next time you've got a photograph uh, the spider that you've taken or you're looking carefully at it, have a look and see if you can see the trichobothria. Just produce a slight air current and you'll be able to see them moving. And it could be important taxonomically. It's, um, it's something that some species will have more or less. Some will have them in different positions, different arrangements. Uh, especially I know in scorpions, um, very, very strong uh, in the, in the uh, systematics of scorpions. Uh, not so much, I think, in spiders, but still well worth looking at. So I hope you've learned something, and thanks very much for watching. If you like it, give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. And if you haven't subscribed, please do so. And uh, I'll see you next time. Cheers.